three, two, one. Fantastic. All right. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Welcome, 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 welcome to Hota Herbs Grow and Tell. We are here. It is Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and it is time for our weekly cultivation club. I am super, super excited tonight for episode 37. As a reminder, we are here, produced, recorded, and simulcast on YouTube by the Future Cannabis Project FCPO2 channel. Uh, we have my good friend London up here helping produce and get the show going on the YouTube feed. We've got people starting to pile in here on the room in Clubhouse, as well as pile into the feed uh, on YouTube. So super excited to get going and get that volume turned down so we don't get any feedback. Awesome. We're ready to rock. As always, I am joined by my cohort, Nick. Good to see you, Nick, sir. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. It's uh, great to be back here this evening. Looking forward to the conversation tonight. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm psyched to have you back. You've been skating on us a little, and I know you're going to be uh, a little bit uh, distracted for the next couple of weeks, but we have some good science stuff to dig into coming up as well. Uh, we were talking about uh, Rabisco and enzymes and, and putting together some, some uh, a new set of science uh, deep dives. So I'm looking forward to that. That was a good conversation we had. It was good to catch up with you yesterday, sir. All right. So. I see we have our returning champion, Benjamin from Acadia Family Farms. Good to see you, sir. How are you doing tonight? Hello, is anybody there? Ben, Acadia Family Farms, are you with us, sir? Ben Morgan, not with us. All right, we'll, uh, we'll come back to Ben in just a second. How about our other ben ben samuelson from soil seed and soil maine hello i'm here all right good, good to be here you get to become I, the first ben now we're gonna we're gonna bump ben morgan down because he wasn't as responsive uh, you know there's, there's no hierarchy amongst ben <laughs> maybe he's been smoking like nick has and so he's a little bit uh, preoccupied actually if i know ben he's probably getting the dab rig going uh if it wasn't already hot and rolling uh so tonight our episode is oh we lost him he's gonna disconnect and come back in he's probably having trouble with his mic um he'll pop back in when he can Tonight, we have a fantastic episode for you here, episode 37. We're going to be talking with the amazing Samantha from The Grow Off, the founder, the woman running the show. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. We're in clone drop season for The Grow Off, so we have six states coming up. My brain is firing on all cylinders, so I feel awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Ben Morgan Dillon, sir, are you able to speak yet? Can you hear me this time? There we go. All right. For some reason, my Bluetooth headset uh, was not connecting. I was able to hear all of you, and uh, you were not able to hear me. So to, to jump back real quick, I'm doing very well, Dakota. I truly appreciate, as always, getting the opportunity to join you and Nick on this fantastic platform. Always something beautiful to learn with great minds. And I'm very excited about being able to bring to the uh, table today a good friend of mine, Sam, from The Grow Off, uh, as well as hopefully our breeder from Massachusetts jumping on shortly, Fat Cat Seed Select. Uh, he's just navigating the new technology, first time on Clubhouse. But really looking forward to a great conversation here this evening and uh, always looking forward to hear what you and Nick have to say. London, also a pleasure to see you again. And Ben, great to meet you. So, so the two Bens you did meet real briefly um, at the main conference because you both were at the main conference. 
Yes. Uh, I and, and, that. and and uh, Ben, <laughs> we were looking at Ben's phone, and he had those really cool little data samples that we were eyeing. We were hanging out. Yes, over yes. I now clearly remember my counterpart, Ben, from the main group. I didn't realize that was the same Ben. Pleasure to hear yes. your voice again, my friend. Yeah, likewise. I was, uh, I'm was. i stoked to connect with you again. I didn't realize it would be on a public forum, but uh, I'd like to, <laughs> <laughs> to, yeah, to be in touch. I've been crazy swamped. We've got our nursery license just getting inspected tomorrow. So there's a lot going along. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations. Awesome. I did want to check in on your progress and see you, see where you were at, considering it's been a couple of weeks since you since you were here. Yeah, glad to be back, and we're we're almost there. We can almost sell an unlimited amount of seeds just out the front door to any adult um, off of our farm where we grow them. So we're excited about that, and plants as well. Not unlimited fantastic, plants. fantastic, yeah. and and only a couple, probably only a you know six to nine months about being able to put that kid to work, right? <laughs> 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 she can walk now, so that's like half exactly. of what she needs to do. <laughs> exactly, she can start carrying stuff for you, right? Walking packaging back and forth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like uh, I heard, I just heard a guy talking about putting his like very young kid to work pulling the lever on a log splitter, and I, I, was, <laughs> I liked the sound of that. <laughs> Wonderful, wonderful, awesome. Travis, thank you for joining us tonight. I see you're brand new to Clubhouse. Uh, if you go ahead and click on the little microphone in, in the bottom right corner, you can unmute yourself. Say hello. There we go. How are you doing? There we go. All right, Travis, welcome <laughs> to the group. Oh, there's no camera. It's just the icon, eh? That's right. That's okay. right. We're just audio here. Cool. Well, this is a, you know, this is actually a first. I don't think I've had somebody on here from Massachusetts that I don't know. So uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to uh, Hot to Herbs Grow and Tell. I am also a Massachusetts person. I'm, I'm out on uh, Cape Cod and uh, I'm excited to see you joining the fray here for the Massachusetts Grow Off. Yeah, me too. I, I'm really excited about this. This is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to uh, all the results. Fantastic. Fantastic. So I do want to uh, properly uh, set the stage and make sure that we inform everybody who's not already familiar with the Grow Off uh, about the Grow Off itself. So Samantha, why don't you go ahead and Give a little introduction to yourself and the grow off, uh, and um, we'll we'll take it from there. Okay. Absolutely. And if you don't mind, while I do my intro, uh, Bangladesh is here from our main. Uh, they're our genetic partner for Maine. If we can bring them up. Oh yes, well. absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I figured it's a New England. Uh, you know home or like a new england group so let's bring both massachusetts and maine into the conversation so yes <laughs> absolutely and, and a lot of us have roots in both and family in both as well so uh my son's up in in maine and and i love spending time up in maine so I've, I've been up there quite a bit got a lot of friends up in maine so it's it's a wonderful place and i love the hat on that picture Bangladesh, welcome to the Grow and Tell. Why don't you go ahead and unmute yourself and say hello, sir? If you go ahead and hit that little microphone in the bottom right corner, you can unmute yourself and say hello. If you're having problems, you might have to leave the room and come back in like Ben did. No, we're good. Sorry about that. All right, perfect. How are you doing tonight? It's, we're doing great. We got John and Jason from Bangladesh Farms. Um, uh, yeah, we're doing great tonight. Uh, glad to be on. Um, Thanks for having us. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Another fantastic group from New England. I mean, New England has got it going on in Massachusetts and Maine. You know, they're they've led the way for New England, and and they've been very. We've been very closely linked 
I think since the beginning, um, I, people have been going back and forth between the two states, uh, participating in events in both states. I know lots of people go up for the, uh, you know, for the, um, the camp out and all the other really cool things that go up on in Maine. And there's always folks from Maine coming down uh, to the New England events in Massachusetts. And uh, I've seen some folks over in uh, Rhode Island as well. Uh, so it's great. Uh, it's, it's definitely a. Um, so let's go ahead and get back to you, Samantha. <laughs> you are the focus. The grow off is. Did I lose you? No, are you still nope, there? No, you're good. You're good. Excellent. Yeah, Hoda, thank you so, so much. I think you and I have been chatting for a couple of years now. We got to get you into one of these competitions, but uh, I know you're busy and I appreciate you hosting us tonight because we are going to be up in New England in just a couple of weeks and to give everyone some background. So uh, myself and my partner in business and life, uh, Jake Brown, started the Grow Off back in 2016, and uh, we've both been in the industry since 2009 and really saw a, an avenue to do a different type of cannabis competition that really focused on like the growing techniques and the growers themselves as opposed to the end product. Um, so we, we, thus the grow off was born and the way it works is we start everyone with identical genetics. So we have Travis and the Bangladesh folks here uh, they're supplying these genetics for the competition so that everyone has an even playing field to start out with. And then you can grow however you like, indoor, outdoor, I don't care. Uh, and then you, you'll submit to the same lab. The lab is our judge and jury. And we're looking for who grows the most terps and the most cannabinoids. And those are the two award categories. Yeah, and I, I really, um, you know, when you first reach out to me and I just heard about the competition, I'd seen, I had seen uh, some of it flying through on Instagram when it was starting to happen in uh, out, out West. And, and it was really, really cool. It was a, it was a good concept. Um, I like, uh, I like the basis of it. We talked, you know, uh, Ben and I, uh, you know, uh, Ben, uh, from Maine, Ben. Uh, we lost the other Ben. Seems he dropped off. We'll get him back in a little bit. But um, Ben and I were talking about, uh, you know, data. And because I'm a data geek and a data person, uh, we always try to have good sets of basis for comparison. And trying to um, compare apples to oranges is something we always talk about, right? When you're comparing two different things, you're not necessarily getting a fair comparison. All you're doing is saying, I like this flavor better than I like this flavor. Um, it's not quite the same. And it's very arbitrary in some cases uh, how people judge the flower based on what they like and what they don't like. I'm not a big fan of lemon, right, London? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of lemon. So if lemon was the flower that you entered, I'm not going to judge it probably as well as something that's really tasty to me that might be like a cherry or a grape. Um, so having this starting point where everybody is growing from the same clone is really re was really really interesting to me yeah and i will i will say the like travis and uh jason from bangladesh like they have a tall order ahead of them because we you know we send them through the ringer in terms of you know picking out a, a cool strain right we don't want to give everyone the same thing that's out there one year someone tried to give us blue dream and we're like, Colorado would crucify us if we gave out blue dream. <laughs> Everybody's so growing only, blue dream this year. Uh, so not only do they have to find something cool to give us, but then they also have to pass hop slate and viroid testing. And then they have to get all these like a hundred clones homogenized so that everyone's starting with the same thing. They're rooted, they're pest free, they're pathogen free. I mean, Hats off to all of our breeder partners because, like, this is not an easy thing that we ask them to do. <laughs> yeah, I um, and, and that's that specifically is the 
is part of it that, um, you know, limited my <laughs> involvement even. Uh, in, in when when we started talking about doing it for Massachusetts, right, um, you know, we, we um, had to get a breeder. And then we had, you know, once we had a breeder, uh, I was talking with Tom from Green Team, who was, who was last year's uh, breeder. And, you know, he's like, I, I don't know where to get these. I'm not, I don't have any space to make these clones. I can't do them mm -hmm. myself. And I was like, well, I can't do it. I've got thrips. I'm not bringing <laughs> your <laughs> mother plant into my environment. I mean, even if I killed everything and cleaned it up, I wouldn't feel like I was going to be uh, safe in providing a set of clones. I didn't necessarily have the space either because of what I had going on. And it's just the logistics of it myself. was. And I was like, where are we going to get these clones from? <laughs> Who's going to make these clones? And uh, Tom and Tom almost was like, well, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this or not. We might have to find some other person or some other way to do that. And, and we got lucky because Ben uh, stepped up to the plate and, and Ben had no idea or no plan of getting involved himself. Uh, this time I'm talking about Ben Morgan. Uh, but Ben suddenly became the clone guy. Uh, for the grow off for Massachusetts and and Ben, <laughs> you you want to talk about that phone call at all? <laughs> hey, he's yeah, it was uh, he's back for round two, so it couldn't have been that bad. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> no, no, I think I'm going to be sticking around for a while. I really liked working with you guys. Can't say I ever really enjoyed producing clones so much, but uh, it was an amazing experience. You know, I had a uh, an interesting and surprising call from Ho uh, my buddy Hoda here, who called me up and was just sort of like, so um. How comfortable are you with producing large scale clones that are basically identical in everything from stature to root structure? And I was like, um, somewhat, what's the timeline? What's the purpose? And uh, he introduced me to Sam and her awesome partner. And I immediately hit it off with them. They're a wonderful team that have a really beautiful vision. And I mean, having been a judge in numerous cups across the country, I really enjoy the objective nature of this particular cup and the way that it's handled and the way that it is exclusively scientifically backed and though i love the nuances of cannabis and specifically terpenes you know that's one of my passions it's nice to sometimes see what a humanless competition can look like to, to sort of balance the scales and give us some diversity yeah absolutely it was uh yeah it was like so uh yeah do you think how do you feel about uh making 150 clones <laughs> like i don't even know how i would do that or where i would put that and and that is part of it as well is that uh you've got such great partners samantha that that actually process was a little bit easier to figure out because uh some of the gear came with the with the plants right <laughs> Yeah, Sam definitely took great care of me. She helped me scale up my clone production uh, vastly, simply with a little bit of, you know, uh, great funding and guidance. And I mean, we had a phenomenal geneticist with team from uh, Tom from Team uh, Green Team Genetics. Sorry, it's been a long day. And um, I mean, really, yeah, Sam, uh, Sam and her partner made the whole thing from start to finish a great experience. I think not just for myself, but for everybody that was involved. Aww. Thank you. This is a true labor of love. Trust me. We're not high times. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And it is, it is truly a uh, community effort. It takes a village. <laughs> when you see these yeah, competitions, I mean, know that, that it is definitely a very community based effort. And I think that's uh, hats off to you as well, because you, you specifically go and try to reach out to people in those communities to get these things going. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, we're not trying to go with the big, you know, genetic of the year because everyone's going to have it by the time the competition's done. So the goal is to find, you know, in breeders doing interesting projects and elevate them into the community. Absolutely. And people that are, you know, are part of the community as well yeah um, exactly. i know you spend some time vetting each of these folks like mr travis yes um gosh where, how did travis come to us ben did you find travis <laughs> yeah i've known travis for a number of years now i've seen him uh been going to trade shows in the east coast for the past almost 
five years, six years now. And uh, I've seen Travis around for a while, and I always really enjoyed the energy that came out of his booth as well as the gear. And he always did a good job of stabilizing his genetics. I loved how he was not just a Northeastern breeder, but he was a specifically a Massachusetts breeder. And so he was really tailored to my localized environment and gave me a great opportunity to work with gear that was really not just sort of, you know, bred to deal with environments similar to mine, but bred in my environment. So for outdoor growing, that was really superb thing. And, uh, you know, having seen him throughout the years, we formed a friendship and a relationship and I respected him for the work that he does. And the breeding work is superb as we're going to see this competition. So I thought he would be a really good fit for a small time breeder that really deserved to be taken to the next echelon, and get his name out there more for the hard work that he and his partner do. Uh, thanks, Ben. I really appreciate that. You know, uh, I was really, really excited when you contacted me. Um, and, you know, I think one thing that really brought us together was uh, my passion for testing. You know, the, the second it became legal, I, I brought my, my, my bud right to the lab and had every strain tested. I was so interested in, in what results I could get, what, uh, what the terpenes were, what the, uh, the th all the cannabinoids were. Uh, so I think that really um, put us together on the map right there. And that's what this competition where it really brings together the amazing part here is that it's all about the testing. And, um, you know, when, when Ben connected me with Sam, uh, she had a bunch of targets, like she said, that she wanted to meet with this strain. And um, so it, it, it took a little bit to pick uh, strains that hit all the targets. But uh, I think that um, we hit them all. And uh, we're really excited to release this strain. It's been, uh, uh, you know, it's been a really cool one to make. And I'm really looking forward to it. So, um, so you know, I, I, I hope everyone signs up and gets the clone if, and enjoys it because uh, it's going to be something to enjoy. Yeah, it's definitely something unique and special. Uh, like I said, I've seen a lot of different cuts over the years, been in it. I had the opportunity to judge, had the opportunity to pick genetics for this competition. And uh, Travis was fantastic when he got the numbers from Sam on what she wanted to hit on the parameters. He not only gave us one, he gave us six different cultivars that could fit the bill and sent me samples, of all of them. And I got to test them all out myself. And uh, I think I picked a really, really nice one that's going to really be very rewarding in an outdoor environment as well as an indoor environment. But it has the capacity to really flourish outdoors in this New England environment. I, I yeah for sure the uh, seeds were all produced outdoors they're all produced out in Martha's Vineyard which is the worst climate I think of all so they're tough they can survive and uh, everyone's going to have I think a really easy time growing these so it, it's going to be a good perfect strain and um, and you know it was uh, really really fun getting it started uh, you know all these were was started you know directly from seed uh and then and then picked right from there so um it's like sam was saying it's something brand new it's different and um it, it fits the bill yeah i think one of the most unique things about it is your environment where you come from i mean when we talk about you know breeding for harsh environments and dealing specifically with you know the massachusetts falls uh, I really think that you, you cannot get any more hardy than a plant that is able to flourish on an island. You talk coastal. You can't get much more coastal than that. You're 360, my man. No, la last week uh, we hit 38 and 36 degrees on uh, Wednesday and Tuesday night. And we were the coldest in the whole Northeast. Yeah, definitely. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably the closest to him <laughs> being yeah. here on Cape Cod, right? Uh, yeah. We weren't quite that cold. We were, we were a good 10 degrees warmer than that. Uh, we yeah. haven't really dropped below like 45. So, uh, but yeah, the, the environment here is really tough uh, because you have really, really high humidity swings. You have really, really sandy soil. Uh, that you can just dump organic matter and water into, and it just keeps running off. <laughs> it takes time to build it up. So it's a really challenging environment here, definitely, and, and even more so on, on the vineyard, uh, which is that tiny little island. <laughs> yeah, you never know when that hurricane's going to come. You, you know, you never know when that, that nor'easter's going to run by. And, uh, you know, when 
uh, you know, in our particular area, we're in a frost pocket. So we're on average 10 degrees cooler than anywhere else. So that's probably why, you know, you were within on Cape Cod or out 10 degrees from us. Although the rest of the island isn't quite as cold as where we're located. Uh, you know, the, the trade-off is it stays a little warmer in the fall. You know, so we get a little extended season. Uh, sometimes it can last till November 1st. So that's uh, that can be a gift. Uh, it makes it so uh, if you're growing some um, sativa, it's really tough to get that 14 weeks of flower in because sometimes you're harvesting last week of October to November 1st. And, and forget about it for Maine. <laughs> right. Yeah. It'll be frozen and purple before it's finished. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So, um, Samantha, uh, where did, what was the first cup, uh, and, and what, how did you work that expansion plan? How did you start expanding out from there? Well, so we're based out of Denver, right? And obviously this is, you know, was the epicenter. I don't know where the epicenter is anymore, but, <laughs> um, you know, inevitably folks started reaching out from all these different states saying like, oh my gosh, I've been talking about this with my buddies for decades, this concept of like, you know, identical cuts. Uh, you have to bring it here. And, you know, obviously California was the first and most natural to take it to. And then from there, we really just followed like legalization path as well as, um, you know, growers that seemed passionate as opposed to states where it's, you know, very corporate and not a lot of home grow caregiver presence. Uh, those don't do well for us because they're just kind of factory pumping out product where, you know, our competition is highlighting the the process itself. So um, that's really how we chose what states we went to. Maine's been begging us to come up there for a long time. I know there's thousands of caregivers up there. Um, our friend Jen Doe is going to compete. I'm very excited to see what she can do. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> you guys got a ringer. <laughs> well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we, we put ringers through the ringer, let me tell oh, you. Oh, <laughs> Absolutely. Jen is absolutely amazing. I've known Jen for a number of years now. She actually, she did, the, she came on the show a couple, uh, a bunch of episodes ago. Um, absolutely love Jen to death. And I'm super excited that she's uh, going to jump in on that as well. So that's great. Uh, she's amazing. There's some really, really awesome growers and cultivators up there in Maine, but they're really spread out too. Maine is a gigantic state. <laughs> Finding a central location must have been tough as well for the drop. Uh, just Portland. You know, I got to fly in. So we're doing it at Urban Garden Center. Awesome. And that's actually going to be in partnership with a Gene Traders event. If Great. anyone doesn't know what Gene Traders is, they're a pop-up like seed and clone um, party. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and, Lou, and Lou will be with us next week. So that's a great oh, prep perfect. plug uh, because <laughs> Lou from Gene Traders is going to be coming next week. Lou's a good friend of mine as well. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Again, somebody else who uh, has been trying to help the community, right? Uh, that's what I love about Lou and the Gene Traders events is it's just genetics, very much just seeds and clones, just breeders and and these uh, nurseries and, and folks getting together. Uh, they're really, really awesome. Uh, great time because it's all growers, right? Who else cares about seeds and clones but growers? Uh, so it really becomes a, it's really quite a quite a, a party uh, for the gene traders. And, and he gets an amazing crowd. Uh, at those events and, and just really some fantastic breeders from all over the place. So it's, it's awesome. I'm, I'm super, super stoked to see him also expanding all over the country too. He's got another, he's got one, I think in Virginia uh, going we're, on. Uh, we're going to be with him for that one as well. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, New York. Uh, I, I unfortunately missed him at the Rhode Island one a few weeks ago, but uh, yeah, we, we uh, I definitely got to get caught back up with my Gene Traders family. Uh, he st the first couple of those were actually in Connecticut uh, when yeah. he was starting out. Rhode Island and Connecticut were mostly where he started. So, 
we'll be talking about that next week. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, I mean, if you're gonna, if you're listening from Maine and you want to jump in the competition, not only do you get to pick up an awesome cut from Bangladesh, uh, but you can also pick up a bunch of other stuff from the breeders that participate in Gene Traders. Yeah, and, and guys, <laughs> just want to go in there that uh, you know, uh, Fat Cat Select Seeds will be at some of the Gene Traders upcoming events. Uh, we've missed a bunch in the past due to uh just travel is really difficult coming from an island so the notification yeah. really difficult i need sometimes two or three months notice to get off the island or i can't get a boat ticket so it's been almost impossible for me to do his events although i've been trying to do them for almost a year now so i'm, I'm hoping i just actually called lou or contacted him last week and he said he's going to give me the next lineup of events so i hope to be there so uh, look for us. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, we are at the half hour mark. I want to quickly say hello to Dutch and Wendy. Thank you for joining us tonight. Also part of the uh, Grow Off family. So welcome tonight. Thank you for joining us. I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a quick reset, and then we'll jump back into the conversation. So this is... Hook to Herbs Grow and Tell. We are here, episode 37. Uh, it's Thursday night. We start every week, every Thursday at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We are hosted, simulcast, and recorded by the Future Cannabis Project and available on YouTube FCPO2 channel. If you are new to Clubhouse, like Travis in the room tonight and uh, some of the other folks bring it coming in, Make sure you click on the little green house at the top and join the Future Cannabis Project Club. And if you're on YouTube from the YouTube feed for the first time, make sure you subscribe to both the Future Cannabis Project main channel as well as FCP02 and pound those like buttons, please. It helps us with uh, the algorithms on YouTube so that we get seen and all of these episodes as well as the other awesome hosts get seen like London uh, and and uh, some of the other fantastic folks that host shows on the future cannabis project we have over we have I think uh, like 24 25 and counting days worth of content out there you could sit there literally for more than three weeks straight watching future cannabis project 24 hours a day and still not get through all the content that we've got out there at this point uh which is awesome and amazing so definitely check out the future cannabis project as well as daga.gardens because we got a whole bunch of fantastic genetics available on daga.gardens even some some wonderful lemon genetics right london <laughs> lemon is big this year <laughs> to be fair, I uh, London London reached out to me last week. It's like, hey man, I want to send you some seeds, and he, uh, you know, sent me a picture. The golden freaking lemon, golden <laughs> lemon. <laughs> oh, but it is a good one, especially in concentrate. Yes, yes, um, and and um, you know, I was actually uh, you know more stoked about this the cover crop seeds that were in the pack with them. But I will grow I, them. I'm going to send you a bunch of extra cover crop seeds just to make sure you're covered for a bit. Okay. And, but you have to do me one promise. Okay. Is, is yes. When you're harv after you harvest your plants and you find a baby carrot or a turnip or a little radish in there, you have to get a picture of you taking a bite out of it for me. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have to harvest my cover crop and, and enjoy the bounty on camera for you. <clears throat> Um, and actually, depending on the cover crop, I might just make some FPJs out of it as well. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, everybody, on the YouTube feed. I see uh, Robert and Laura and Jeff and Wheatus, uh, Detroit River Rat, Arizona Phoenix, all 710 connoisseur and the whole crowd out there weed monster grows as well everybody is joining us got a good chat flowing on the uh youtube feed tonight so i thank you all for joining us there a uh, good conversation going on in the background here 
in uh, on the chat. Uh, so I see a lot of comments going in there as well. So that's awesome. Thank you again for joining us. We're here every week on Thursday night for our weekly cannabis cultivation club. Uh, so make sure that you subscribe and come back and join us again. Wendy, how are you doing tonight? Thank you for joining us. Hi, everybody. I am doing great. A little, little late tapping in. Just had to pick up the kids from grandma's house. But um, yeah, otherwise it's hot in California. You guys are getting 38 degrees over there. We're like not dipping past, I don't know, 83 in the daytime. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, it's like it's in the mid sixties right now for me. So, it's yeah, definitely... we're, uh, it's it's cooled off finally today a little bit now, but um, it's it's amazing, you know, when the plants get such a rough start like they did in California this year, and then it finally warms up and everything just blows up and like doubles overnight. It's it's actually kind of cool to see. There's always a moment of stress when everybody goes, oh, my God, like we're going to have the worst season ever because nothing is growing. And then a week later, you're like, oh, we're back to average. Never mind. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's good. It's all good. It's all good. It's a good thing the plants don't watch a calendar because I think they would be, you know, they're, they're probably less stressed about it than we are. Right. We're, 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 we're looking at the clock. We're looking at some, the temperature. Yep. We're looking at how much water we're already using. Um, oh, that's the one thing we're not as worried about this year in California. I gotta I say, it's just I saw like that raining. cool, I saw that cool solar hookup mm. thing you got going on too. Oh, it's so amazing! Our solar pump. Yes. Yeah. Ah, uh, the most amazing thing ever. It's one of those things that, like, I grew up pumping water. I hated it. Like, I had to hike. You know way out it wasn't okay it wasn't that bad of a hike but as a little kid you're like oh i have to go pump water and then there was this you know gas powered motor that you had to pour the gas in and then you had to pull it to start it and it was like i can't remember a single time i didn't sit down in tears because i could not get that damn water pump started and like two or three years ago must have been two years ago now <laughs> somebody was talking to me and I was like, it'd be cool if there was something like, I don't know, a solar powered water pump. And they're like, dude, there are, th these things exist. And I was like, oh my God, what? And it was just quite literally life-changing. Like the water pumps when the sun is shining and there's batteries. So when the sun isn't shining, the water still pumps. It's a miracle. <laughs> not only do you not have to haul water, you don't have to haul gas and everything else either. Wonderful. And the amount of of times that thing would break down was just ridiculous. So um, yeah, our pumps are from a company called RPS Solar. Um, they're a really small family owned and operated place. They have engineers on staff. So like that for me was another game changer. Where I was like, I don't know, like I have to try and set this up myself. And like, oh no, we've got engineers, just give us a call. We'll walk you through it. I'm like, oh, done, this is great. It's awesome. That's awesome stuff. I uh, often have referred to myself not as a grower, as just somebody who's hauling water. Um, <laughs> because a lot of the t especially with, uh, with a lot of the natural farming, uh, we're not really doing a lot. We're just kind of keeping the plants wet, and letting nature do the rest. So um, that's a lot of what I'm doing is really just hauling water indoors. Uh, you know, for, for a long time, I didn't have a sink downstairs in the basement. So that's, I was literally hauling buckets of water downstairs. Uh, that was how I got my, kept my plants watered and, and, and did all that stuff. But, and then eventually you always get the, I always get the sink installed downstairs, which is like a miracle to not have to go up and down the stairs with the five gallon buckets of water all the time. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Watering we, the gorilla grows were very, very similar as a five gallon bucket into a Creek that you're like, you know hiking to wherever the plants were and until you realize that like, okay, you'd rather haul up a big roll of ag plastic and, you know, ag line and, you know, figure out some siphon techniques. And yeah, it's so nice to turn a faucet on and have their weak water. Like it is seriously one of the best blessings of living in a first world nation is being able to like have water on demand. It's big, big stuff. And Mr. Dutch Blooms, how are you doing tonight, sir? How are things in Oregon? What's up, man? How are you doing? We're doing great. How are things in your farm? I'm actually uh, up in, in Washington. I'm, I'm sitting here on the beach. 
uh, with my kids. We're just having Very some nice. some dinner. But yeah, things are going really slow. It's really cold. I, like you said, you're in the mid 60s. Um, I'm in the mid 60s as well. Like we just hit 50 degrees at night this week for the first time. And so yeah. it's been um, really, really slow, you know, but it's, it's happened here before and it'll happen again. And so I'm just kind of hanging out, got a bunch of plants ready to go. I moved my giant pumpkins out this week, which I was excited yesterday. I got them out, which is super cool. My first time kind of going at that, um, doing all the tech with the heated soil cables and sub irrigated nice. water system, et cetera. So yeah, I'm feeling good, man. Awesome. Awesome stuff. Thanks for joining us tonight. All right. So, Samantha, what is this about a Hawaii grow off I saw? <laughs> well, I figured after seven states of this that we're all going to need a vacation. So <laughs> uh, we met some awesome folks on Oahu uh, that are fighting for caregiver rights there. And he said, hey, I want to do a grow off to show that you know, we know how to grow and people should respect that. And they, I, in our last chat with Future Cannabis Project, Jason from Care Wailea uh, was saying that they're kind of trying to follow the main model, um, you know, of keeping things local. So anyway, he is going to be throwing a big uh, Patience Appreciation Day, July 9th, and we're going to be handing out cuts uh, from a plant that was gifted to him from King... Kamehameha the eighth, I believe. I hope I didn't mess that up, but I'm very excited. Um, obviously for the the trip to Hawaii, but also to you know honor the caregivers there and see what they can grow. Yeah, I saw that and I was like, man, I really want to go to that one. <laughs> it, it's open invite. Jason is said you can camp on his farm. You don't need to pay for a hotel. Just come on down and like literally anyone. <laughs> That's uh, that's awesome. That is awesome. That is uh, Hawaii is one of the spot was one of the things on my bucket list. I've been to like 36 out of the 50 states, um, but I haven't made it uh, to Hawaii. And it's definitely one of my targets uh, of things I want to get to. And I was going to go for uh, for my 50th birthday. And unfortunately, we hit covid. Uh, so there wasn't really a lot of travel going on. So it's still on my list. I want to get out there. Maybe that's a good excuse to try to figure that out to go, uh, to, to come out and, and join y'all. But, um, that's amazing. <laughs> Ex expanding to Hawaii even that's you're definitely, <laughs> definitely getting some, some serious reach. All right. So let's, let's talk about, uh, dates. I want to get some dates out here. Uh, let's talk about that upcoming schedule. So give it to us. Yeah. So before I break anyone's brain, uh, there, <laughs> there is a schedule on our Instagram at the grow off uh, with all of these dates. But uh, to summarize, we'll be doing the Colorado drops next. That is June 10th and 11th. Next up is California. We're doing drops in Humboldt, um, Oakland and San Diego. Uh, after that, we have, I believe, Maine on June 25th. And that again is in partnership with Gene Traders. And then June 26th, we have a double header. Uh, we're doing simultaneous drops in Massachusetts and Virginia. And then we're, like I said, like we said, wrapping things up in on Oahu July 9th. Awesome. Awesome. And basic entry uh information for people obviously it's on the gene traders website uh but just talk about it what is it you know you sign up and then and then what how does that work talk about yeah, how the contest so works our, this is our lowest entry fee ever and i think the lowest entry fee for a cannabis competition may maybe ever um <laughs> we wanted to encourage you know growers of all shapes and sizes to join us this year and just have the biggest you know year ever so it's 50 bucks uh we also have a social equity grant um again to kind of show diversity in cannabis cultivation so uh female growers lgbtqia veterans um bipoc uh it's 50 percent off so it's 25 dollars to enter uh if you qualify under those 
And, you know, you just pay your entry fee. It covers, you know, the cost of the clones. You grow them as best as you can. And then uh, you pay your lab fee with our partner lab, which is about a hundred bucks. So 150 bucks and you could win a big uh, wrestling belt as our trophy. <laughs> um, and then a bunch of hookups from our sponsors. Bragging rights, a belt Truly. and some <laughs> serious hookups from the sponsors. Um, and, and, you know, really that's, um, it, it's definitely to me, um, um, a, a, a serious notch in the belt really, uh, because you, you know, there really is no more fair competition in my mind than this one. Everybody's starting out with an even playing field and you bring your talent to that plant um, you have to, uh, you know, give it your all and it doesn't matter whether you have a hundred lights or a hundred watt light, uh, you could win based on what you do, uh, with this plant. And so, um, it's, it's really cool. And, and um, having that, uh, social BIPOC equity, uh, aspect of it is also amazing to try to get as many people involved as possible. I appreciate you dropping that, uh, that entry price to try to get more folks involved because that's really the fun of it to me. Uh, the more people who grow it, the more variety uh, of types of environments and terroirs and uh, experiences to see what comes out of these plants. I mean, that's exciting stuff. Truly. I mean, one of my favorite stories of a winner is, you know, this guy saw us on the like evening news in Humboldt the night before the clone drop. Uh, so he comes down, he's like, I heard there's a competition I'm supposed to enter. And I said, okay, well, let's get you signed up. What's your email? Don't have one. What's your phone? What's your cell number? Don't have one. Uh, so we signed him up for his first email account. <laughs> and the, I, I believe he's... <laughs> Um, I believe he's outdoor and uh, he he has a couple belts now. I mean, he's won several times. So, you know, and he wouldn't have known about it if he wasn't watching the evening news. <laughs> he's got 30,000 followers on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's got God. a gaming console, a ring. He's taking pictures, you know, he's totally flipped over now it's amazing it's like you you hooked him up with with crack or something you know but um that that, that that's awesome that I, I i get that you know it, it's um i I've, I've often said and that's one of the things i actually appreciate about getting on clubhouse is that it was a different group of people uh instagram you're only seeing i i estimate maybe 10 percent of the cannabis community is on Instagram or even looks at Instagram in any way, shape or form. And so Clubhouse was like another slice of group of people. YouTube's another slice or group of people. Uh, but there are um, these these little pockets of communities. And, and so there's definitely a lot of times I've been talking to people like, oh, you want, you know, who are you? Um, and I hand them a sticker or I, you know, I hand them a bud or something. And I'm like, oh, you're on Instagram. You know, you can give me a follow. They're like, I'm not on Instagram. <laughs> uh it's pretty it's pretty common so uh yeah no i'm not surprised that you actually I, i'm kind of surprised you got somebody who didn't have an email address but um <laughs> yeah no I'm, I'm not all that surprised that there's definitely some non uh you know there's just some people who love cannabis uh who grow it and are probably still in the closet because it's been an illegal thing for so long even here in new england we feel like we're all free but it's only been five years uh it's not like we've had this for decades it's only been a little while so there's a lot of folks who still don't even talk about the fact that they grow cannabis in, in the northeast and they still keep it quiet and keep to themselves and that's fine too. If you want to compete, but you don't want your name out there, I can ship you the belt. We never have to talk about it again. You can tell your friends and family. <laughs> it's awesome. Awesome. All right. I see Mr. Guerrero joined us. How are you doing tonight, Chris, sir? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. <clears throat> I actually need a beverage. Um, <laughs> I'm getting a little gravelly 
Uh, I need yeah. a beverage. Uh, too much, a little bit too much enjoying this. Um, what am I smoking? I'm smoking on uh, the Hindu root beer, actually, uh, from Pure Breeding. So I have some of this. It's that uh, GMO, that root beer GMO crossed in with a New England, <clears throat> a New England uh, ra- rock candy. So it's a very tasty, potent smoke. And um it's definitely uh, hitting me in the throat tonight. Nice, nice. I'm smoking uh, on some Pam that I got from Mr. Toad uh, from some of his. He's it's seeded, so it has seeds, but it's a uh, it's a Pam. It's Pam, but he crossed it with uh, the seeds are he crossed with space cheese, so it's a Pam crossed with space cheese on the seeds that I'm going to be taking off of it. Um, but the bud itself is a Pam, which is really good. I like it. I'm like, I'm, I, I don't know how much, how much cannabis I smoked with seeds in it throughout my lifetime, probably pounds and pounds and pounds of it. So Absolutely. to me, to me picking out seeds and then not being squished is a plus. Yeah. So, so, but the Pam is great. I don't know if you guys ever smoked it, but it's different. Um, Fan of the to, Pam. Yes. Space yes, cheese. From. Yes, Fan really. of the space cheese. Yes. Where, where'd you, where do you pick that up? Oh, I got that from uh, Bone. Uh, Boneyard. Mr. Yeah, so I got it from him. Mm. Uh-huh. Um, oh. I went up there this, uh, I went up there on Monday. And I visited with him. Uh, just correct yeah. at least uh, space cheese strain uh, in 20. I was just curious if it had made it around. Oh, uh, I, I know that his space cheese is what he made. Um, so uh, I don't know if, it, if, if that's the same one. Oh, I'm sure every, different. Every, everything I make is completely completely unique and different so yeah but i i was just curious you know uh, sometimes i pass stuff out all over the place and end up some of my strains up in uh oregon and washington there's a lot of people in oregon that have passed them around so they end up popping up every once in a while uh, okay yeah this is in uh i'm in sacramento and this is uh yeah northern california cool man yes yeah, so, I'm 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 super excited. I've got his uh, gift of the gods uh, oh in nice. my veg tent right now, and uh, it's the next plant that's going to go into flower as soon as that uh, problem child F two comes out. Uh, his uh, gift of the gods is going in, so I'm excited to grow something from him finally. And uh, again, sending out positive vibes to Mr. Toad. I know yes. his uh, mother is again, un- unfortunately, in the hospital. So sending yeah. out positive vibes exactly. to our friend Mr. Toad. Yeah, exactly. So yes, send out positive vibes, everybody. Uh, she's back in the hospital. He's he's there right now. Um, sitting next to her, uh, listening to us as we speak. So um, we're thinking about you. Um, so yeah, it really sucks that he's having to go through this. Um, I just wish the healthcare system was a lot better than it is right now. It's ridiculous what you have to do to get seen and how long it takes for you to get seen. Uh, so it's not just, uh, people with no insurance. Uh, his mom has insurance. My wife has insurance and they're both having problems being seen. So it's, it's just ridiculous. Definitely challenging. Definitely challenging. So, uh, I, uh, I, I, uh, I look forward to seeing, uh, what comes out of those seeds. I, uh, I, I, I wonder, you know, I always had lots of seeded, really seeded weed, uh, when I was growing up. And, and so we, we knew how to, you know, tilt a tray. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I let like, those seeds roll. Yeah. I, I always say that I, I go, I don't care if the shit has seeds. Just tell me. Yeah. 
I, I need to know because I just don't want to just ha- just throw uh, buds into my grinder and, and exactly. then grind the seed. If right. I know there's there's seeds in it, then I'm going to take it apart by hand yeah. and pop out the seeds and stuff. Yeah. Um, just just let me know. But like, uh, so I hear there's another grow off besides my grow off. You know, because we're having the Guerrero grow off uh, on the FCP zero two, and I hear there's another grow off. So <laughs> well, this what, is the what, I I would call this more the original grow off since it's been going on for a number of years and it's going on oh. in a number and it's been going on in a number of states and it's called the grow off. Uh, oh. So you know we have to get you into uh, I would imagine the Michigan possibly maybe a, a California. Uh, you said what was those dates on that seed drop, Samantha? You said they were in three locations in California. Yes, yeah, so or the clone gonna... drops. Sorry. Yeah, we're doing the drops uh, in Humboldt on June twelfth, Oakland on the fourteenth, and then San Diego the sixteenth. Okay, so are you guys just traveling south, or is that is that what you're doing? Uh, yeah, so the, the clones are from Hendrix Farm, so they'll be bringing them down to each of those drops, and then we're in seven other states with it, too. Okay. Yep, okay. and uh, different cultivar, uh, different breeder. Uh, normally, the breeder is usually from the state that the grow-off is in as well. Oh, cool. cool. And you're always more than welcome to join the FCP02 uh, grow off to the Guerrero grow off. It's with the Guerrero blaster, which is a, is a Skywalker G cat into the space cheese. So, so I would, I would actually say that their competition is probably about as opposite from your competition as possible. Exactly. Right? Your, uh, their competition is based on uh, science and everybody's exactly. starting out with the same clone. Uh, exactly. Your, your competition is based on your approval and exactly. your opinion, exactly. as well as well as bribes are more than welcome. I understand exactly. in your competition. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I'm not above uh, uh, taking bribes. I, I will take bribes. All the bribes. Um, okay. So, yeah. Wait. Where, where do we where do we find out about this one? Because I can't enter the grow off because I'm I'm part of the you know the um, interfacing with the breeders and things and the propagators. So I'm really sad because I can't enter, but I'm gonna grow well, anyway. I'm just not gonna put it through the you know channels to see if I win. But here's one I can enter. Tell me more. <laughs> okay. So you can enter this. This is you have to go to dog dog garden and get this uh, seeds through there. Um, or you could get the seeds through uh, on Instagram. Hit up uh, Philio Phil on Instagram, or hit me up. I have a, a couple packs of seeds. Um, so uh, I, I, I know. One of I know. Those, awesome. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Any one of those would be great. I'm sure London would be happy to ship a pack from Dagadot Gardens directly to Wendy. Sweet. Exactly. And so then, what kind of bribes do you like? No, I, if you if you watch my show, I have a show on FCP Zero Two. It's called the Guerrero Grow Show. Um, I I like snacks. I'll be doing my research. Uh, yes, I, I like, absolutely. I like, I like snacks. Uh, um, I like cannabis, and I've said this is some of the some of the briberies is like if you use one, you, it's a point system. If you use my my sponsor's products, uh, so like if you I'm sponsored by Royal Gold, so if you use any one of the Royal Gold products, as those are points. If you use any of the grassroots products, like grassroots uh, pots or any of their products, they have amendments also. If you use right. any of those; those are points. If you're in the Northern California area. And we happen to be able to go swap ounces, you know, because I'm not going to, I'm not asking you for an ounce of your weed without giving you back an ounce of mine. So we could try each other's out. So those are points too, because oh I can Oh my God, actually, I love it. So I can yeah. actually smoke it. Absolutely. So, so, so there's and one level for people who are just entering with a picture. Exactly. And there's a whole other level if you can get the plant directly to him so he can smoke it and judge it. Exactly. So 
that's how we're going to be doing it. Um, I'm not, I'm not above taking cash bribes. You can buy <laughs> points. They're a dollar. Snacks. Piece. Snacks are also appreciated. <laughs> Edibles. Snacks are appreciated. I like those gift cards. So if you if you <laughs> send me a Trejo gift card, those are points too. So well, yeah. I'm I'm in Southern Humboldt, so you know I'm right here in Northern California. Um, okay, I'm in so. Sacramento. I'm right That's in the middle. That's not too of... far. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no, it, it's it far. All the time. Oh, oh well, wow. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I used to. I I know because I used to go all the time too because I used to live in Eureka, and uh, like during 2007, 2006 is when I lived there, and I was able with my medical card to bring, you know, cannabis from there down to, uh, down to Sacramento and that dried up really quick. So it was, it was like, there's no more business. Everybody in their uncle was growing. So uh, a lot of business dried up and it wasn't worth it anymore. So I had to stop. I, I love it. I have, we have here, we have the grow off, which is, you know, completely non judgmental and just based on data. And then we have the Guerrero grow off, which is completely judgmental and not based on data at all. Absolutely. Oh, exactly. Absolutely. There's something for everybody. Exactly. That's right. That's right. We are, we are an Everybody's equal opportunity exactly contest. <laughs> yes. The best weed will not, the best we probably won't win. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, damn it! I might be out of the running. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it, 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 who knows? Because, like, seriously, if like, let's just say that the person doesn't use any of the products, and well, I love Real Gold. Those guys are amazing. I don't do grassroots stuff, but you know, I'll make an exception. Um, I make bomb edibles that actually would like you yeah i'm gonna make a special bag for you and okay. um <laughs> i'm not don't live anywhere near a trader joe's but i'm not opposed to driving by one so i'm making little like check marks in my head here <laughs> exactly see th- those are see are you already getting those are all the bonus points so that's good i'm a good listener put you on somebody <laughs> else top of somebody that's, that's right there with you so if they don't have the, that then you and you have that and that there you win so and Samantha, do you do you think we can get this guy to smoke all of the grow off entry weed? I think that would yeah, be a really was, interesting data point. Yeah, Chris, I, they were just ta- they were just talking in the YouTube chat. Are you having a party at the end of this? Yes, we're gonna uh, hopefully we'll be having a party. That's all depends on um, life situations that are going on as we speak. Um, everything's always up in the air when it comes to life situations, but if life it works out the best, yes. Um, well, let's uh, let's connect offline. Um, you can join our party and uh, try some of these strains and see what you like best. And maybe I don't. I'm not gonna I, uh, encourage bribes. You can do that part, but <laughs> I I'm a, I'm a really good judge in the aspect that I'm not picky. <laughs> I like lemon chirps. I like I like cilantro. I like, I like uh, anise. I like all the flavors. I'm not opposed to any flavor. I am not biased in any way when it comes to different flavors. So I'm not going to, my bias isn't going to get in the way of what what's good and what's not. <laughs> awesome. All right. So it is just past 10 o'clock. Let's go ahead and quickly reset the room. Uh, thank you all for joining us. This is Hota Herbs Grow and Tell. It's We are here in our weekly cannabis cultivation club every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, recorded, simulcast, and produced by the Future Cannabis Project and available on YouTube, FCPO2 channel. If you are not already a member of the club, please join the Future Cannabis Club here on Clubhouse, as well as subscribing to both the YouTube Future Cannabis Project and FCPO2 channels on YouTube. Make sure you pound that like button. If you're having fun on that chat tonight, I only see nine likes, but I see 
53 people have been through the chat. So make sure you go ahead and click on that little like button over to the left and get that in there for us. We appreciate that. All right. So um, we have uh, talked about our uh, we've talked about the grow off and, and the uh, genesis of the grow off and, and kind of how it's been spreading. Uh, we've talked a bit about uh, the what goes into some of the creation of the clones, uh, or at least from some of the uh, scrambling uh, that's gone on in the background to get this, uh, get these plants to the community for the contest. Uh, talk a little bit about Samantha. Why don't you talk a little bit about the uh, testing and the wrap up and, and some of that, and then we'll talk a little bit about Ben's data again, because I, I definitely want to understand where we're going with that expansion, that data set uh, investigation. Yeah, so with this all dependent on lab tests, uh, we have to choose, you know, good science and not freebie labs and things like that. So, uh, you know, we in each state look for which labs doing the best work because they're the judge and jury of this. So, uh, like I said, you know, if the entry fee is 50 bucks and then you have to pay your lab fee, which is about 100. And we're looking for who grew the most terpenes and cannabinoids. And then a cool thing we also do is growers let us know as much as they want to about how they grew the plant. And then we take that data and correlate it to the test scores so we can start to see, you know, what, what potentially aided in more terpene growth in this plant. Um, you know, are people using more LEDs this year than last year? Um, you know, what helped the cannabinoids produce in that particular cultivar. So a nice strain report goes out to the growers at the end of this. Um, and then I want to circle back on that, but to answer how this all wraps up, uh, this year for the first time ever, we're doing one giant award ceremony. So we'll be in Vegas uh, November 15th, announcing winners from all eight states. And uh, except maybe California, because you guys got a late start and uh, outdoor won't finish in time, which is uh, maybe where Chris and I talk about having um, a collab party in December. But yeah, so anyone that's participating gets to come to the Vegas party, even if California you come to, um, it'll be the biggest and I gathering of growers, I think, from across the country that we've ever seen. So, and we'll be li uh, live streaming it. I'm, trying to get future cannabis project to do some coverage for us and let everyone know who won in all of our uh, competition states. I think London wants to come to Vegas, get that passport <laughs> ready. Wait, is London in London? No. no London's in Vancouver, so it's actually a very cheap <laughs> flight. I'm just going to point that out there real quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I am. Um, it sounds like a really fantastic event. I actually have some really exciting stuff coming up in the next little while, so I probably won't be available to be in that area in the world. But I'll tell you what, um, I will happily support in any way possible satellite location, um, from wherever I happen to be in any way that I can. Um, you just let me know or reach out and I'm happy to help out there too. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Like we've been talking about, you know, the purpose of this is to highlight the cultivators that are part of this. And a lot of them are small family farms and we want to make sure that we have a spotlight and a live stream that gets to as many folks as possible so that they can elevate their brand and their growing styles. So I appreciate it. Thank you. That's exciting stuff. That's exciting stuff. I love that uh, continuing to raise the bar on the uh, awards ceremony as well um, and, and being able to uh, do a live stream to, to give the to get the attention on the growers because, you know, without the growers, there's not really a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, you know, 
we had Ben on here, uh, Ben Samuelson. I got to make sure I'm separating my Bens as well. You're now uh, the the way the way that the screen sorted. You're now sandwiched between the two Bens, Samantha, um, on my on my uh, on my uh, clubhouse screen here. But uh, so Ben took data from I believe California Grow Off. Is that that was correct, Ben? And and yeah. yeah. Um, what's are we going to be? Have we been doing? further collection of the data from each of these events, Samantha, and are we going to do some comparisons and correlation on a larger size? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting because lab testing is not standardized across states, so our results are all different standards, and then also every state has their own cultivar, so it's not really apples to apples, but Ben and I are trying to figure out how to collectively, you know, look at the aggregated and anonymized data and draw some, you know, correlations just for the industry at large, as opposed to state by state. But I think that's something he can speak to more than I can. Yeah. I mean, I knew about the grow off data and I, I knew the concept of it and I had seen a few graphs that were made out of it. And I just kept pestering like my uh, new Nat of the Humboldt Seed Company. Like, can I get the, the actual data? I want to poke around in it. Um, so it was just sort of an interest project at first, and I, you know, it's hard to ask questions of this data because it's not, it's not a designed study. So the most obvious thing that jumps out is that almost any, like, does outdoor weed have higher THC? Like, yes and no, it's all over the map. Does LED versus HPS? have a huge impact on terpenes. Like basically, no, there's some kind of other factors going on. It's too complex that you don't just see that um, there's a really tight correlation to any of those categorical inputs. Um, so that was a big, a big takeaway already from this project. So to get more rigorous with asking questions, it's a, it's a good place to start for making hypotheses, but we will need to see um, possibly more, more voluntary, uh, what, what do you call that, Sam, when people fill out the survey and it's kind of spotty. Uh, per, if participants want to get really detailed in their survey filling out, maybe we can get some, I don't know, uh, yeah, it's an interesting, it's a, it's a chicken and an egg situation because it's like we don't want to, you know, growers don't want to give up IP, but if they can see the results of that as, as being beneficial, perhaps they give more, but we need more to give them more. Right, um, right. So it, you know, it, it will get there. It's, you know, a trust, you know, trust exercise. And yeah. the competition isn't set up to be an experiment, really. It's set up to let the lab be the judge. So we're sort of reverse engineering it to ask questions of the data. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and surveys are also uh, tricky <laughs> in many different ways, having done lots and lots of user surveys and, and things like that over time, uh, over the years in, in, um, in IT. Uh, surveys can be tricky. Uh, number one, it's always hard to get people to fill out surveys. Um, so your response uh, quality uh, is always dependent on how well you can get adoption, uh, how well you can get people to actually fill in the form properly. Um, and then you have to uh, tailor the form in a way that limits uh, how um, how far people can go off the rails, so to speak, on their data entry, uh, because you don't want the, the text field to be too variable. If the text is too variable, it becomes hard to correlate the data. So you look to drop down boxes and radio buttons and things like that, that are sometimes limiting in the types of answers you can collect. Yeah, my, my best uh, commentary on that was uh, Wendy, I think last year, the year before, was like, uh, your form on the lighting side doesn't have the sun. <laughs> what am I supposed <laughs> to do? <laughs> it's like, she's <"Geez>, thanks, Wendy. <laughs> 
That is wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, and so um, having having the right sets of categories, and then like you could say, okay, well, you have LEDs. What type of LEDs? What brand? Uh, there's yeah. dozens. There's dozens and dozens of brands, and then you know you'll get a bunch of people who will misspell stuff. So you have to take. Uh, you have to go through and like clean up the misspellings so you don't have 12 different versions of, of the same uh, product or lighting solution or whatever it is. Um, and then you have all these different wattages and, and different uh, measurements that could be utilized to, to give that information. And then you get to a point where people don't necessarily have a light meter to tell you how much par is being applied to the light, to the plants. <laughs> Truly, so many variables. What my right. favorite that we we learned over the years was uh, one of our partners out of Oregon when we were there uh, said the grower is the phenotype. Because at the end of the day, like that's the only thing that matters on this plant. Like you can have all the bells and whistles, you can do nothing, but at the end of the day, it's the grower that's making the difference. The grower is the phenotype. So, um, yeah, hey, I think hey, before um, you move on from that, I have can I, some. Can I highlight that a little bit. Yeah, go I ahead. Think, I think it's really interesting yeah. that when you guys talk about like growing these relationships with some of the growers and and talking about some of these instances where it's like, oh, we're trying to save our IP and stuff like that. I find it super interesting because I don't think there's that many people really reinventing the wheel when it comes to this stuff. There's a lot of train of thought following on the new things, and I think it's kind of silly that if we were and if we were a little bit more with our IPs and how we do things we kind of a silly mentality and behavior I just wanted to to throw that out there as a really as, as a point of of conjecture I think it's funny that we get that we do these little things is and it's it's so important because it is about the grower it's just like a chef in the kitchen everybody can have the you could have a thousand people with exactly the same recipe all the same measurement tools everything in front of them and you're gonna get a thousand different dishes that come out of it no one can even even with the perfect ip you still need the perfect captain to perform it so i think it's, it's we need to move past this as a, as a group and a culture yeah i you know on on that note like i would love to see the you know some of the help desk calls for some of those food uh, you know, ship at home food products, right? I've never, uh, you know, they, they send you the, the box of the food. It's already, everything's already chopped up and prepared and it comes with the menu card and the instructions and says, you know, how to cook it and like the size of the pan and what temperature to use. I imagine that even in those cases, people are all over the map on what's happening with the food and what's actually coming out. It never looks like it does in the commercial. Speaking of what's actually coming out, I wanted to ask, like, having never been to one of the Grow Off Award ceremonies, are the actual flowers as variable as the lab results? Like, are they wildly oh, yeah. distinct? Yeah, Ben, you should check out, um, we post, we make posters of all the flowers side by side. It is wildly different. I mean, oh, I've seen, I've seen pictures, but what about, like, the smoke and the, the smell and everything that typical cannabis cups would be judging for. Oh, yeah. I mean, yes, same, same. But yeah, it's totally variable depending on how it was grown and who grew it. So we always encourage growers to bring, you know, samples to the party so they can share with friends. And they do. Okay. And <laughs> it, it's as different <laughs> as it's as different as it looks. So yeah, the one we did so last wild. year in Massachusetts, I sampled at least uh, at least 10 or 15 different of the, you know, cuts that were returned. Some of the growers have brought it back in and there was a wild diversity, not just in, you know, effect, but in morphological profile, like what the actual flower looked like, differences in calyx structure to some extent, obviously differences in frostiness and actual trichome production, differences in terpene profile. It was, it was impressive to see the extent of chemo <clears throat> chemotypic differences that were expressed just by the differentiation of environments and cultivator, you know, techniques. 
That really, that's amazing. Cause I mean, when you're hunting a unicorn, you kind of, if you're only hunting off of a seed grown plant, you have that one plant to look at and it, you know, you're kind of trying to catch that lightning. So much of that lightning was the environment. So it's, it's kind of exciting for, for hunters in general. Like you, it's nice to grow seed and hunt your own garden if you do want to run clones. Cause you know, I can send out this unicorn to the grow off and then everybody gets something way different, which is exciting. I agree. Actually, one of my favorite things to do when doing some hunting is to use a variable environment room. So that way you actually purposely create a differentiation of environment from one side of the room to the other side of the room. And you can run, you know, uh, a variety of different pieces as long as, you know, you're running them in segmentation. So that way you can have mm -hmm. one select cultivar of each in the different zones, so to speak, through the environment. And you can actually pull multiple different chemotypic expressions of the same phenotypes from one environment at the same time to give yourself sort of a, a larger snapshot of the ability of that plant or of different you know variations different phenotypic variations if you're popping from seed and you can actually see them within that environment but you have to be really dialed in with multiple sensors and, and really know and be able to control that variability within that environment Oof, that is quite a hunt <laughs> I'm more of like, a, let's let's look at 2,000 plants in the field and find the coolest ones. Well, yeah, I mean, I've I even saw the differences in in at Ben's house between what the plant inside looked like and the plant outside. Those GMOs outside were monsters oh. in that bed you put together. Yeah, I mean, inside to outside, it's it's a crazy differentiation because you can titrate the environment inside so consistently throughout the day, and consistent three from day to day. But when you're running outdoors, you're sort of at you know the whims of nature. You are beholden to what you are given, and you have to work with it. And uh, that's one of the reasons I've always loved growing outdoors from the very beginning was simply the uncontrollable aspects. It, it forces you to become a, a better, more reactive grower, in my opinion, because you have that constant variability that you have to learn to deal with and anticipate and fluctuate with. Did um, I, I, I unfortunately wasn't uh, able to attend the um, cup. I, I don't know. Was Tom there? Did Was there anything that he sampled that he was surprised by that came out? Yeah, Tom and I were sitting together that whole night. Uh, he sampled one or two, but you know, Tom is not much of a flower man anymore. He really loves yeah. his rosin. Yeah. And uh, so, I mean, you know him, he also had a nice pack of rosin with him, all different flavors. So he, uh, he mostly was just smoking on some solventless, but he did try <laughs> one or two. Uh, I, you know, we tried the two cup winners specifically yeah. and uh, cannabinoid and terpene profile. And I mean, they were both ecstatic. You know, the, the cannabinoid profile, if I remember correctly, came back over 30%. And the terpene profile, I want to say, was around four or high threes. And uh, I mean, both both of them are really superb, superb examples of the product. And I personally grew that cut myself out and uh, indoors and outdoors. And they were, you know, spot on, really great representations. Yeah, he's got an amazing what, nose. Go ahead, Samantha. I'll tell you what, what Tom was most uh, surprised with was the magician that we had at the party <laughs> after those dabs he was like magic freaks me out sam i gotta get out of here for a minute <laughs> that sounds like tom <laughs> yeah yeah i remember that no, that, that magician actually uh, i gotta say he was a sleeper he ended up being a fantastic show <laughs> <laughs> you never know what you're gonna find uh at a grow off event um and and the summit lounge is also an awesome spot um i i uh, I, I do miss being able to hang out there uh i i talk about it all the time i need to take a drive uh, and go see the go see the summit family it's been a while that's it's just such a great spot uh to have an event and to get together and, and to be you know because it is a consumption lounge you can get in there and you can actually have a bunch of those buds all together and everybody can sample and sniff each other's jars and taste each other's uh, weed and really compare notes on, on how they grew it and what they did to grow it. So having the, the cultivators together at the end as well is, is really fantastic uh, just to get that community together. 
Yeah, that's essentially what this is all about at the end of the day is just, you know, finding the community, bringing folks together um, to talk about what they love the most. It's the coolest thing to watch folks just like share their finished grow off product and talk about what they did to it because they have common ground at that point. You know, it's not a party where you're just kind of, I don't know anybody, what do I talk about? It's like, well, you're all here for the same reason. You right. had the same thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. Yes. And I, I just, I have to say like the Sam and Jake show is the most hysterical thing I think I've ever <laughs> witnessed at any cannabis event anywhere. Um, if anybody was at the one last year in Humboldt, it was like, oh my God, there were hot dogs there was like <laughs> impromptu comedian stuff it was i was just i was in stitches the entire time it was amazing <laughs> thank you Wendy. <laughs> yeah we had a hot dog eating contest for what reason i don't remember <laughs> there were too many hot dogs it wasn't even a contest it was like hey you won an award come here have a hot dog like you didn't have to get <laughs> off stage without a hot dog being shoved at you it was hysterical Putting hot dogs in people's cars when they weren't looking. Literally. <laughs> yeah, there, there's a new phenomenon since COVID that like nobody eats at parties anymore. I'm like, y'all are stoned. Why aren't you eating all the food that we bought? Like, what's happening? Everything's got to be individually packaged <laughs> for them to feel safe, maybe. <laughs> I just thought there was too many of them. I didn't realize that nobody was eating them. I think I had like three pieces of pizza and two hot dogs. And <laughs> You're the real hero, Wendy. <laughs> All right. So um, I know you're now, you've obviously expanded off the continent by getting to Hawaii, but we do have our good friend from Aotearoa, New Zealand, Dr. Christ up here. And maybe it's time to expand the grow off to New Zealand. How are you doing today, Dr. Christ? Almost, Jason, almost. We'd have to have it a medical grow off um, that uh, medical practitioners are still not legally allowed to cultivate their own home growing medicines. So it'd have to be a grow off amongst the 26 multi million dollar medicinal pharmaceutical cannabis companies in our country, sadly. And only three or five of those medicinal cannabis companies are actually fond of the recreational market. The other 27, as we all know, are international conglomerates running on a billion dollar enterprise to make sure that everybody's profiting from cannabis other than the patients. Job bless and one love. I'm an advocate for cannabis. Um, I've been to a few underground grow offs myself, won a few competitions rolling. <laughs> Mm, cannabis cigarettes and yeah i will endeavor to create a safe compassionate place for you all to consume in when you arrive here so yes aotearoa new zealand is open open invitation to all of my friends here at jota herbs grow and tell job bless jace job bless everybody in the fam group love you all now that is a serious trip um, for us to plan. Um, and so he'll keep us posted. And when they do open up, we're going to do a grow off in, in New Zealand. It's going to be fantastic. I'm there. We, uh, we're working on an international model, not quite ready to say where yet, but, uh, all the pieces will be in place, uh, as soon as they're ready for us. Amazing. Amazing. All right, we are at the 10.30 mark. We've been in here for 90 minutes already. The time has flown by. Uh, let me go ahead and give a reset here as Resin jumps up. We'll say hello to you in just a minute, sir. Uh, this is Hota Herbs Grow and Tell. We are here in our weekly cannabis cultivation club. We're here every Thursday night, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific recorded simulcast and available on YouTube on FCP02 uh, on the Future Cannabis Project channel, FCP02. Uh, so uh, this is episode 37. We have been here talking with Samantha Taylor, the founder of The Grow Off, which is an amazing, amazing US-wide 
event happening in multiple states now uh, where you can get involved, uh, get a clone uh, and join in the fun. Be part of the group of people in your state competing for the belt, right? Uh, we've got drops coming up in Virginia, Maine, Massachusetts, California, Hawaii. Uh, so exciting stuff happening. What else is uh, on the roadmap for upcoming soon, other than this international development that's going on? Hoda, that's not enough. <laughs> no, no, it's never enough. All right, fine. Uh, so one of the, <laughs> of course, there's more, right? Uh, so one of the reasons behind, you know, dropping our entry fee to 50 bucks and getting as many growers involved as possible is because we're starting to be asked by states that are newly legalized, countries that are figuring things out. They're like, I have a license or I'm getting a license. I have no idea how to grow. Do you know anyone that can help us figure this out? And so kind of a long play here is to help people that have gone through the grow off process, get jobs if they want them, you know, in, throughout the industry. So um, that's been a dream for about a year of ours, but uh, who has the time? So we're really trying to nail it down this year after the clones drop. Um, we're asking all the growers, are you looking for jobs in the industry? Um, are you looking to license your brand, et cetera? So we're going to dig into that once all the clones are out. Fantastic. Uh, helping the grower network. Uh, fantastic. Growers need to network. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of time we're spending, we're out in the fields hauling water, right, Wendy? Uh, not networking and uh, having a place to network through uh, and possibly get, uh, get a hand in the industry, especially in some of these states as they pop up. That's awesome. I have a passion for helping people find work. Uh, I did work for Monster.com for about 12 years. Um, I spent more than a decade helping people find jobs and, um, you know, get their resumes uh, posted and all those other things. And, uh, it, you know, it was one of the things that I was really proud of was that company's mission was to help people get jobs because finding a good job changes your life. And... Um, being able to uh, support yourself and do something that you love is even better. So uh, definitely that's, that's exciting development. And, uh, and I applaud you for, uh, for working in that direction and let me know. I'm, I'm happy to, to, to give you information and, and history on what some of the things that we used to do over at Monster and maybe get you a job board of some sort going. Oh my gosh. What a resource, Hoda. Thank you. You're going to be You're on this welcome. team. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say one thing too, I was kind of laughing because I'm like, you know, literally transplanting while we're talking. And that's one of the things I love about Clubhouse is that for those of us who are farming actively all the time, constantly, because it never stops, um, you know, able to join in in conversations like this and able to build that network out and have all these amazing discussions and meeting all these wonderful people that, um, you know, people are like come on a zoom. And I'm like, Oh my God, that means I have to like, you know, get dressed and put on makeup and actually wear clothing. And absolutely, I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I do. I do really enjoy it. I, you know, I, I like, uh, I have no problem being on camera. I do, and in some cases, enjoy being on camera because I'm very emotive and uh, my my f have a lot of uh, fun facial expressions and stuff like that. But um, I do really appreciate Clubhouse. I like being able to just kick back, relax, have a conversation, maybe get something done in the background uh, while things are going on. Obviously, not when I'm hosting the room, but um, it, it's definitely amazing. Like the KNF room, I love just going in the KNF room. I very rarely speak in the KNF room because I'm usually just listening and learning um, and, and doing other things in the background while that's going on. So uh, I agree with you, Wendy. It's really awesome to have a conversation platform. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I love being on camera too. It's super fun. But, you know, you can only do that so much when you're transplanting 462 accidental seedlings that you left in a bowl of water to sprout. <laughs> <laughs> and that Happy is accident. things like the grow off because it's all about genetics and you don't even know what it is. And there's nothing more exciting. I'm listening to you guys talking about seeds and stuff. And I was like, man, we are all genetic junkies. And that's, it's, it's just, it's kind of a problem sometimes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Let me say hello to Resin. How are you doing tonight, sir? Resin, are you with us? Can you stay? You have an opportunity to speak right now. He was Mike Flash in the second period. There we go. Is it a problem or is it kind of a solution? Uh, being a genetic junkie. I mean, uh, <laughs> shout out to Samantha Taylor in the grow off. Shout out to Dr. Christ in the prohibition fight. Uh, shout out to Hoda and uh, what is this episode 37, Doctor? Yes, sir. Rock and roll, man. Rock and roll. Yeah, man. No, this is a it's a beautiful time to be alive and uh, beautiful time to be a genetic junkie. I'd say. Absolutely, absolutely. And and uh, Dutch with Dutch was with us earlier, and I I like I have this whole box of seeds I came home from his uh, conference, and uh, just trying to think about what I'm gonna how and when I'm gonna get through even half of what I got. Oh, at talk that, about it. At, at that event is is, is insane. Um, I just what did I just pop? I just popped uh, the Natty Bumpo that I got from uh, Dan uh, at you know Rebel Grown when I when I was uh, I got those from him at the main conference. So those are the first seeds from the main conference I've been able to pop. Uh, in I, got, I squeezed them into the rotation. <laughs> I remember you <laughs> mentioning them before. What, what's the story behind the Natty Bumpo again? So Natty Bumpo itself is um, he was, is a character from The Last of the Mohicans. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And he never and, fit in. Because, yeah. Exactly. A stranger right. in a strange land. Uh, a guy that. caught between uh, the uh, basically the heavy colonial folks of the time and the Indian nations. He was a backwoods guy. And um, so I'm reading actually the deer slayer right now. I'm uh, about a, a little bit more than a third through that book and uh, reading about it. So it's kind of cool to have uh, a story connected in with the, with the genetics as well. Not just well, it's a cross between this and this. And, uh, you know, I found this as a bag seed. You know, sure, that's fun. <laughs> but to have, uh, you know, to, to have the plant named after this really iconic character is kind of neat. And uh, to be able to spend some time reading and, and uh, getting, a, you know, just something else a little bit off uh, off path is really cool. Really a lot cool. Of time and care was put into that naming. Speaking of which, do we know the lineage of it or is it a secret? Um, it is not a secret, but I do not have it in front of me, unfortunately. Very excited uh, to hear, hear that when you, oh. when you do. Oh, wait. Uh, I, I, I got the oh, pack. Hold on. Okay. So uh, according to the package, it's a double OG chem. Oh, my God. <laughs> by crossed with. The 5G's yellow OG Sour F1. All right, you win. <laughs> <laughs> you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with some, some good quality OG Kush, you know? Um, Absolutely. I have a, um, I have a Kush uh, actually hanging in my tent right now. So I just finished that New England Hazy Kush. Oh, and wow. um, Nice yielder. Yeah, yeah, it's um, and and there, there's some nice dense flower too. Um, I just mm. actually posted on Instagram. If you check my story, there's a couple quick pics of the of uh, a couple sample buds I just trimmed up, and they're nice and frosty looking. Rock and roll, man! Rock and yeah. roll. That's pure exciting. Yeah, That's awesome. Well, I got some good news for y'all today. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this last time. But uh, I asked the city where I'm at in the central coast of California their sentiment on um, 
you know, the farmer's market and having a cannabis farmer's market designated to just cannabis uh, following the regular farmer's market. And what I was told is no, but we can definitely do a farmer's market. Um, they said they can actually section off a cannabis section within the farmer's market. So uh, we're going to manage a cannabis section at the farmer's market and uh, he's managing 15 farmer's markets. So I'm about to cast a very, very wide net on Clubhouse, Instagram, and elsewhere for the Central Coast uh, for all those interested. I know uh, if y'all are familiar with Rick on here, who has the CBD drinks, he brews lemonade and he brews root beer. And from what I'm told, he has the best uh, CBD beverage on the market. Rick is amazing. Isn't and, he? And his, and his product is also really uh, a top-notch quality product. His passion is uh, uh, undeniable for brewing, absolutely. man. Absolutely. You know? and, and that's what we need is like those people that are just like gung-ho about their dreams and will not take no for an answer, you know? And those people are going to inspire the movement to just move faster. So I'm, I'm honored. I'm really honored to be like, so he's the first vendor I'm after because he's after, he came at me <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm like, let's do this thing, man. You know, he's got lavender and tea bags brewing in his lemonade and he's, he's using real sarsaparilla in the root beer. It's like, once you hear the ingredients, you're like, oh, I'm sold, right? Yeah, so, he's and he's I'm a root beer fiend. I don't know if you yeah, guys he's a really beer. good, really really good cat, and he's definitely put the work in. He spent an amazing amount of time on right. developing his products and making yes. sure that he's putting something that's a, a high quality out there. Yes, yes, and then all right. So, the, are you gonna get? Oh. Are you gonna get involved in the grow off? Oh, I'm all about it. Let's do this thing. What's the clone uh, at hand we're, we're discussing to be growing? And and I just want to make sure it's not a feminized clone. This is a regular. Uh, well, it's from a clone. Seed. <laughs> well, it's yeah, a clone. It, you can you can clone a feminized seed though. Um, and I know that uh, in-house genetics on Instagram did a one world uh, a grow off with a feminized seed. And that's the reason why I didn't get involved with that one specifically. But uh, if if this one's a regular seed, I'm I'm more than well, happy. This is from it. yeah, it's not from seed; it's from clone. So right. everybody gets the same exact clone. Uh, everybody's guaranteed a female. Uh, it, they all came from the same plant. Okay. Uh, so everybody's getting as equal footing as possible to get going. Is and, it a secret? Uh, the the plant or we yes. Okay. No, the, it's always a secret what the cultivar okay. is. Correct, Samantha? That is correct, except in the case of Virginia, where we held a photo contest and the winner of our you know, beauty pageant, uh, we selected to do our Virginia cut and he's going to release the, the winner of the photo contest as the Virginia cut for this year. But otherwise, Ooh. everything's a secret. Ooh. How exciting. <laughs> How exciting. Yeah, this it's, is, it's, and the fact that a, a a lady, a queen, got this thing kicking, uh, <laughs> really makes me privy to to join it, into the fun of things and the festivity of things. But uh, the only my only uh, concern is that my hands are friggin' full, and uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't have a light. If I had a light, I would I would say I don't care how busy I am, shoot that clone. But I don't even have a freaking light right now. But if I get my hands, I, I have a, um, I have a business established for two years. So I got some grants lined up. I got some funding lined up. So as, as long as I uh, fill out some documents, scan them and turn them in, I'm, uh, I'm more than likely uh, interested. When's the kickoff date is the better question. Uh, what You said you're, uh, so you'd probably be closest to the Oakland drop, closer than San mm -hmm. Diego, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the North be... Bay. June 14th. June 14th. That's coming up quick. Okie dokie. Uh, you can always go outdoors with that plant. Yeah, just throw okay. it outside. All right. Now you're really challenging me because I have no space outdoors. But if I can gorilla grow her and get photos of her, that would be interesting. 
That would be very, <laughs> very interesting. Yeah. That would be, <laughs> I mean, come on now. I'm near Santa Cruz. This is where we made Blue Dream after all. Come on. <laughs> All right. Uh, so anything that you'd like folks to know, anything additional you want to wrap up with tonight, Samantha? Yeah, I mean, gosh, we covered so many good topics. I think, you know, the big takeaway should be, you know, it's a $50 entry fee. It's worth the clone itself in any state that we're in. And it's the point of all of this is to just highlight cultivators and their skills and throw a party in their honor. So um, I encourage anyone, no matter what skill level, shape, size, background to enter and give this thing a go. It's a lot of fun. You'll meet a lot of new friends um, and hopefully win a wrestling belt. <laughs> well, you didn't say anything about a wrestling belt. Absolutely. <laughs> really got to get my money together. Yeah, we don't, it's not just a trophy. It's a wrestling belt. All right, now yeah. it is a championship belt. I grew up on wrestling belts. We gotta do this thing. All right. Cool. I'll see you in Oakland on the 14th. <laughs> well, if nothing else, I'm gonna cheer you on and add wind in your sails that way. So uh don't count me now. I'm definitely gonna be a spectator in this sport. It's gonna be absolutely really cool. spread the word. Spread absolutely. the word, repost on Instagram. Uh, shout it from the hills, tell your friends, do TikTok dances to the grow off, to make sure you get the word out there and, and, and get people involved. It is a community driven event. We want to get as many people in the community growing these plants as possible so that we have the biggest volume of variety and uh, just try to get, you know, to, to build on that energy and, and get as many people involved. Well, now that you say this, Hoda, how about this? Uh, my brain, my brain's uh, working now. Um, since I got something to plug and Samantha has something to plug, why don't you hit me up on the back channel and uh, I will uh, go live with you on Instagram if you'd like. And we can cast a, a wide net. Yeah, right before the Oakland drop, because uh, it seems like uh, we'll be covering the same uh, territory. So it makes sense. Uh, for the home growers to reach out to you and the uh, established home growers that are ready to go to market, reach out to me and we'll just keep cross pollinating. I love it, man. I saw, I just follow you on Instagram. I see you have a B in your profile for that cross pollination. <laughs> <laughs> You're the lady, lady. Yeah. I want to be a queen bee breeder, but I'm just a breeder in general right now. I, I've been collecting genetics from all hand selecting genetics from all the American breeders since the pandemic hit. And I took that as a sign to really uh, take, uh, stake my claim in the, in, in our authority as growers and, and just become, um, you know, uh, start writing the, the history that um, cannabis growers have been writing throughout history. Absolutely. It. For, over 10,000 years, this plant has been a part of our history as Come human beings. Talk about it, Hoda. Hoda say that. That's right. Ten <laughs> Over 10,000 years, this plant has been a part of us. Uh, we have cultivated this plant. This plant wouldn't even wouldn't exist in its current form if it wasn't for humans as well. So we are just as much involved in its evolution as it has been a part of our story for a very very long time um so yeah absolutely it's a wonderful wonderful plant um all right anything uh anything left anything else samantha last call for uh items on your list to let people know if you want to reach out uh hit us up with ways you know the website the upcoming dates again Throw that yeah, out so there. We're, just, uh, we're at the grow off on Instagram and at and the grow off.com. We're just always the grow off TGO on everything. So, Beautiful. and listen, Hoda, thank you so, so much for opening up this space. It was a fantastic clubhouse first time for me. I'm going to start using this. And yeah, <laughs> you have to join us more. I know Wendy's I on here more. all the time. Absolutely. I'll take any time with Wendy that I can get. <laughs> Wonderful. So we'll see you in the KNF room on Wednesday nights too. <laughs> I love it.
Hey, my uh, puppy is freaking out, so I need to hop off. But thank you all so much for joining. Um, and we'll see you at the grow off. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Samantha. All right, uh, let's go ahead and go round. Ben, anything to wrap up with, sir, tonight? As the only no, remaining was, uh... Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Next time when we have uh, the other Ben jump on me, we'll just do Benjamin and Ben. That makes it easy. <laughs> but uh, no, it was a wonderful conversation tonight. Everything, uh, everything was great to listen to as usual. We had wonderful speakers up. It's always really great to be able to talk about the Grow Off. I think it's an excellent event. I think it's really... A uh, wonderful opportunity for, like Sam said, people from all different walks to be able to step up. And uh, I mean, I've definitely really enjoyed getting to see the different growers and the different potentials um, that are brought to the table. You know, it's 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 beautiful to see how sometimes it's unexpected uh, who can really pull it out and really produce like an incredible, incredible product. And it's always really interesting to see the different profiles that are expressed. Like I said, you know, so much diversity is expressed within the same phenotype, uh, just having all these different growers express their own chemotypes. So it's really nice to be able to see that. But uh, thank you, as always, for the space. Thank you, London, for helping to put it up. And uh, Travis, thank you for jumping on. No, it was the first time. Wendy, always a pleasure. Doctor, it's great talking to you again, my friend. And Resin, it's always a pleasure, buddy. Yeah, it's um, and, and it's a very much a uh, competition that's aligned with my uh, with my purpose, with this, you know, with the Grow and Tell, right? Which was uh, always about getting the growers, the local growers together so that we could sniff each other's jars and smoke each other's weed and talk about how we were growing and what we were growing and what we were doing in these differences. And uh, the grow off is also very much like that, right? We're all getting this same cultivar. And then we get together at the end and go, how did you do that? It's like, I got this. How did you get that? What are you doing that's different from me? I'm running LED. You're running LED. What's the difference? What type of lights are you using? Um, and, and really getting into some of those differences and, and those discussions. Um, and then we have folks like Ben who are analyzing the data. Um, and I'm sure Wendy also has... Uh, some fantastic contributions going on as far as SOPs around our creations of these plants and getting things ready to go. Uh, Wendy, anything for uh, from your standpoint that you want to wrap up or, or share some things around the grow off with before uh, we close up tonight? Yeah, I, I jumped in a little bit late, but um, so I don't know if you guys kind of discussed viral pathogens or anything, but that was um something that I, I really pushed for um, early on last year, I think it was, was making sure that, you know, all the mothers have been tested to be free of hop latent viroid. Um, we got hit with that a few years back, and um, it was my first experience with that particular problem with cannabis. Um, every time I go like, oh, I think I've experienced everything. I've, I've just learned not to say that. <laughs> There's a new <laughs> thing right around the corner. So it's one of those don't tempt fate. Just be like, oh, there'll be something next year. It'll be different. I don't know. Absolutely. Um, but HPL was really, it was just, it's a bizarre disease and it can show up in a myriad of ways. And sometimes you don't even know that it's there until the very, very end. Um, and so it can really suck and you can accidentally transmit it to all the other plants in your garden. If you have moms and you're taking cuttings and you're not being, you know, really conscientious about sterilizing your equipment and stuff. So I, uh, I just kind of, you know, basically was just like, we got to make sure that they're not HPL positive. So everybody needs to do testing. And so that's one of the raddest things about this is that you're getting, you know, an amazing clone that is you know, not going to possibly be easily available. You get to compete with all these cool people and you get to make sure that it's actually clean genetics, which is super awesome. And um, it's, it's just fun. It's really, really fun. And I know that like, I've entered it every year in California since the very beginning. And last year was actually the first year I entered my sample. So like, I think my very, very first year, the deer came in and like ate it down to nothing and I couldn't quite get it to come back. And I was like, oh, oh, well. oh And terrible. then like the next year, they didn't get watered or something. I can't even remember. It was just like, you know, kind of one farming fiasco after another. Sure. And so last year, I, I finally got mine in and got it into the ground and then just basically treated it like all my other plants. I always had these grand plans of like, I'm going to treat it like this and I'm going to do all this special stuff and I'm going to give it extra. No, nah, I didn't. I didn't do anything. I just you know, gave it everything that all my other plants get and um, kind of kicked myself afterwards. Cause I was like, man, like, I really wish I would have been a little more conscientious every other year because 
actually putting your flower into the competition and seeing where it stacks up and seeing, you know, those datum points and talking with the other people, talking with the people that win and the people who didn't win and the people who grow and how did you do it? What did you do? And where were you? What number were you? What farm are you? It's, it's just fun. It's really, really cool. And if you, you know, you don't really have a reason to go to the award ceremony if you didn't actually make it to the finals. So, um, you know, or you think you don't, but you really do. You should. Uh, but yeah, you should. No, I mean, you don't even have to be in the competition to go to the award ceremony. You can just go because it's super fun to have an entire evening where you get to completely nerd out with all the other cannabis nerds and talk about all the genetics and it's um and yeah, free hot dogs. Probably, and free hot dogs if you're in California. <laughs> yeah. Free hot dogs whether you like it or not. <laughs> so I do encourage people to enter. Um, I'm I'm working on Samantha and trying to figure out how to get myself a clone from every single state just so I can like <laughs> live vicariously and be like, what are these genetics? Oh my gosh. Yes. So, um, yeah. Genetic yes. junkies, it's one of the best things because you don't know what you're growing. So it's it's just a whole new level of farming. And, you know, you don't get to say like, oh, I know OG is hungry, so I'm always going to feed it more. You have to really learn how to read the plant. And super fun. I highly, highly encourage everybody to check it out. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's, that's a, you know, a super important point of it, right? It's that community aspect. It's that uh, getting involved and sharing and, and understanding that, you know, to, to get to know those differences and why those differences are happening or just loving the differences that are happening, right? Enjoying the variety uh, that this plant produces and, and just being amazed by all these different aspects, these different terpenes that'll come out. It's like, how did you get orange out of that plant? I didn't, I got licorice, you know, like what happened? Why is that going on? It's, it's, it's super cool. This is and visually like, Oh, no, sorry. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I was Wendy. just going to say like visually looking at it, like it's crazy. You would look at these things and it's just like, Half the time, I'm like, there's no way that's the same plant. There's no way that's the same plant. Like, that's mm. insane. It looks nothing alike. Like, that one looks totally different than this one. And then you experience it, and you're like, oh, it's the same plant for sure. But that, you know, chemical expression, a phenotype and chemovar, not, well, not chemovar, but the, the phenotype and the um, expression of the different terpenes and cannabinoids and flavonoids and, you know, phenols and esters and everything, it's just cool it's yeah super fun yeah um i completely agree go ahead resin what were you gonna say the mic the micronutrients right wendy the, the micronutrients and the macronutrients like it's it's night and day when when a plant eats only macro or or gets the full spectrum of it or uh yeah i couldn't agree more it's, it's so exciting to see uh different and then that you think of elevations and and then the suns and all that. It's just like wine. It's absolutely like wine. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, I love, I love comparing it to that, but, um, Oh, now I totally forgot. <laughs> to be, to be That's, completely honest. It's, it's all good. It's all good. My friend. All right. Travis, any, uh, anything to wrap up with, sir, anything you want folks to know about, uh, about the cultivar you selected or where they can find you at? Uh, well, they can always find me at fatcatselectseeds.com or on Instagram at fatcatselectseeds underscore official. Uh, that's the easiest way. But, uh, you know, Hoda, I got to tell you, this is a really great platform. And I uh, really enjoyed listening to everybody talk here tonight. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. And, you know, I'm really, really excited for this grow off. And, you know, being providing the genetics and providing this cut you know, I can't grow it for this one, but man, I think I might have to drive up to Maine and buy one of their cuts. So. <laughs> Absolutely. Because man, I'm getting excited to compete and not being able to grow my strain. I guess I'm going to have to go for another one. So Hell yeah, it's heavy. Hell yeah. Right. So, so it means- looks like it's two days earlier than the Massachusetts one, but uh, I'm, I'll have to find a way if I can't make it up there to enter somehow. Yeah, we may. Uh, we'll we'll see if we can work something for you. You know, Ben's not too far either, right? He's in Rehoboth. He's just on the mainland. Uh, we can we can work something. You know, maybe I can come down to Falmouth and meet you at the uh, at the port or something. You know, well, we, the, we can, the clone we, drop for that one will be on the twenty fourth, 
And then I'll be at the Worcester one on the 26th, which is the Massachusetts clone drop. Nice. So I was hoping if anyone's in Maine on the 24th, maybe they Well, can Trav, I might, I may be going up to Maine to do the pest inspection for that bro. Um, it's yet to be decided as of yet, but I may be uh, the one that's going up there to do that. And if so, I will grab you a cut while I'm there and bring it down. I think and we just, can work that out. Just, just so we all know, um, the rumor has it that Nat from Humboldt Seed Company may be in possession or becoming in possession of a letter from the DEA that states that um, cannabis cuts and seeds contain less than 0.3% THC and so therefore are legally classified as yeah, hemp. Yeah, Wendy, they actually passed that, that six weeks ago. They, they, okay, six weeks ago? Yeah, it's okay. been passed. Okay. Seeds. Sweet. These are federally so, legal, 100%. I can now well, travel clones. with them on the boat. You can send and them in clones. the mail. Yes. You can send them, bring them on airplanes. Right, but and, and clones or just seeds? No, not clones. Um, okay, so this is and clones. Yeah, oh. the DEA, the DEA uh, letter, yeah. I've seen that. Yep. And it, it basically declares any plant material, plant or material, that has less than the 0.3 THC number is considered hemp. Uh, mm. So if it is a Could clone, a seed, a cutting, a, uh, you know, a um, something that you're doing in uh, tissue culture, those are all perfectly legal as hemp and are not marijuana as the D mm. under the DEA's definition of the plant. Yeah. And then oh, you classify it differently, though. Massachusetts uh, has its own, the you know, Cannabis Control Commission right. has, has, has its own particular set of rules that say, you know, any uh, cannabis plant under 12 inches. Is, right. Is, uh, really well, Massachusetts will definitely be the last because you guys created the police. So. <laughs> well, and, and all, Cal all just all to be clear, like Cal <laughs> California is the same um, because state law is superseding federal for some weird reason. Um, but legally you cannot have anything to do with hemp or can't or you know you can't have anything to do with any kind of weed outside of metrics so therefore it has to stay inside of california um, there it's it's kind of crazy how it's all working but you know there's always i don't know not not that i would ever recommend doing anything illegal or against a really dumb regulation <laughs> but there are workarounds like partnering with a hemp farm and Come on um, now. you know <laughs> talk about it <laughs> hey, hey, hold it. I was, I remember what I was going to say, I remember I was going to have a senior moment, young senior moment, but I just wanted to uh, say that uh, y'all, y'all are doing God's work right now. It's, um, you think of how the transition's happening from the, the cold sub-zero vibes of a dispensary and uh, it's transitioning with, with vibes just like this. The culture is finally coming back. Yes, Starbucks and Target's open, but the mindset of this country is still reopening if we're still doing tre tre trudging along but this the events like these are just really fling us into the future and and just really um cement our culture uh worldwide you know and, and it establishes a, a vibe to set worldwide so i really commend all of you for for doing this wherever you are and um and I really also encourage you equally to push these farmers markets, uh, farmer market laws, because that's equally as important, equally as valuable for your community to get together, get these, uh, you know, cannabis, just like food. It doesn't be, it shouldn't be bought in a warehouse. These grocery stores are warehouses. Let's be real. Right. And, and that's what they do. They just sit on the shelves. They go bad. Then they go on discount. Right. In reality, they got to be farm to table, just like food. So why not uh, push the issue if we got the momentum and and uh, have a really beautiful summer this year, y'all. Have a really, really beautiful summer. Absolutely. Farm to ball. I'm all about farm hey. to ball. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Uh, great. So, uh, Travis, I look forward to uh, seeing how your cultivar does with all the fantastic folks from Massachusetts. Uh, I think it's going to be another exciting event. We will figure out uh, some way 
to get you that clone from the from the uh, main grow off uh, if I have to send my son to go pick it up for you. Uh, Somewhere who's up in Portland. I gotta get one because I'm, I'm. We'll get you one. We will get you one through the network. We will get you one. It'll definitely happen. Um, and and I appreciate you joining us tonight. I appreciate you joining Clubhouse and coming in. Uh, and, and definitely feel free to come by and say hi and join the group. We're here every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. This is Hote Herbs Grow and Tell. We were talking about the grow off this week for episode 37. Next week, as we mentioned earlier, is gene traders. So uh, speaking of genetics, uh, my good friend Lou will be joining us next week. Uh, he has been running a genetics, uh, really farmer's market kind of thing that's been traveling around the country. Uh, he's been going from city to city, getting the local breeders together and the local uh, farmers who are selling clones together and doing these genetics only events where you can pick up seeds and clones and talk to the breeders about the plants and get really and meet a bunch of other growers from the community. So they've also turned into these fantastic community pop-up events uh, where you can meet other local growers and other folks that are in your community uh, and start building that group for yourself. Uh, so really, really excited to have Lou with us next week uh, for Gene Traders. Uh, he's been doing that event for years, and he's really, really uh, upping that game as well. Um, so please make sure you join us next week for the Grow and Tell. Next Thursday night, 9 p.m. Pacific, 6 p. I'm sorry, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. We will be back here uh, for our weekly cultivation club. Thank you all for joining us. London, sir, are you ready to uh, shut down the room and take over the feed from the YouTube side? Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Thank you, <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you all so much for being here. Thank you to everybody on the YouTube feed and all the folks who joined us here on Clubhouse. We look forward to seeing you next week and have an awesome weekend. Good night. Hello. Let's see what happens here. So I will do the house cleaning. Let's just make sure. Can you hear me loud and clear? Should be able to hear me loud and clear. It shouldn't be too terrible. I have some crazy news, man. I don't know if I want to tell everybody yet. So. Maybe you should just wait. But regardless, um, check out my Instagram for some cool news. If you check out my Instagram, you might find out some cool news. And it's going to be even cooler because we're going to like sh do it with everybody. It came out weird, but I I'm trying to be elusive and hopefully it's working. But anyways, I wanted to give a quick heads up because tomorrow is important. Uh, you have Organic Chemistry with Sean Colton at noon. Um, and then on Saturday, we have Planting Trees with Planting Seeds with Mr. Trees. Planting Trees with Mr. Trees. Uh, Alex Olson is in on Monday. And then Cannabis for Breakfast next week. I have a, I have a buddy coming by. It'll be an exciting episode uh, where we're going to talk about... <clears throat> where we're going to talk about... Uh, Actually, he does bongs. He does some really he gets really cool, interesting vintage glass pieces and makes them into into bongs and smokable, uh, functional glass. So we're gonna have him uh, come over to my house and smoke my weed. Um, so that should be a really fun time. So come, make sure to be around for that one. Hopefully, I don't smoke all my weed first. Uh, but yeah, other than that, have fun, keep it growing, and happy happy evening. Future cannabis is here. Check out Daga.Garden. Do it all. Be part of the community. Got to do it. Can we say bong now? Can you? That's my question, Shredder. Do it. Say it. Say it out loud. Say it so loud that I can hear you. <laughs>